Hey, welcome to our Street Sense group chat. We help money stuff make sense. And today we have some food for thought. I never understood that saying. Food for thought? What do you mean? Yeah, shouldn't it be like thought for food? Should, yeah. should it? Yeah, like if you're consuming it, like eating it, like a, like here's a bread for food, so here's a thought for food. Well, isn't it more like, like food for your brain? Like, you, like your brain eats the thoughts? Well, no, that makes sense. I, I feel like you're both right and both wrong. Actually really simple. But yeah. can we, let's go. Today, all of our videos are about food and grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Let's start with some grocery shopping yeah. 101. Roll it. Okay, if you're a new grocery shopper, you need to know about this money saving trick. Experienced grocery shoppers will know about unit pricing, but I'm just getting the hang of it. When you're at the store, look closely at the price tag. Ignore the retail price for a second. Focus on the unit price here. This can be hard to spot, but it's worth the effort. This tells us how much we're paying per basic unit for a product. Checking the unit price can help us compare items and get the best deal. Check out these San Pellegrino bottles. The smaller glass bottle is 31 cents per 100 milliliters, and the larger plastic bottle is 23 cents per 100 milliliters. Personally, I like the glass bottle, but is it worth the extra money? And the salami. It costs more than twice as much to buy the sliced version at 150 grams than it is to buy the unsliced version at 600 grams. Is the price of convenience worth it? You decide. Now, bigger is not always better, but in these cases, unit pricing made it make sense. But take a look at this cereal. The family size box is 96 cents per 100 grams, and the smaller box is 81 cents per 100 grams. Technically, the better value is the small box based on unit price. And here's a box of five granola bars. Typically, you might reach for the cheaper price, but you're getting more weight for a better unit price with the chocolate dipped ones. What will fill you up more? Unfortunately, it's not a universal practice to put unit prices on tags. In Canada, only Quebec has made it a rule. But a lot of stores voluntarily do this, so that's kind of nice. What are your tips for beginner grocery shoppers? Put them in the comments. Okay, I'm really glad you mentioned that at the end because I was looking and I couldn't find it. Yeah, you can calculate it yourself based on the weight and the price, but it's obviously easier if it's just written on the tag. Yeah. Math is always easier when the answer's right there. I've for noticed sure. that. Yeah. yeah. There was actually a survey done that 91% of people believe consumers should have access to unit pricing. It's always weird to me when there's something that so many people agree on and yet somehow still 9 people, 9% 9 of people disagree. Why? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe they're worried that if everyone knows about unit pricing, that they'll not have their great deals okay. anymore. I Actually, I can see that. Well, yeah, it's a like point. a secret. They don't want others in on it. Yeah. Which is a great segue for my video. Which, okay. So I'd like to play my next. Yeah. This is all about mega corporations. Okay. okay. We need to break down megacorps. Let me explain. Look at all the choices we have in snack foods. We've got Oreos, we've got dairy milk, we've got Ritz. But y'all, everything here is owned by the same company. That company is Mondelez, and it reportedly made more than 26.5 billion in revenue in 2020. Take a look at this graphic that Capital One shared online. Even though it feels like we have nothing but choice when we go shopping, megacorps control the pricing and selection of a lot of the stuff we buy and consume every single day. This isn't just a food or drink thing either. Movies, music, beauty, fashion are all the same. For example, Nike, they operate these big brands too. Here's a thought. Megacorps employ lots of people and add to the wealth of our economy. That's good, right? But if one company controls the majority of sales for one type of product without a lot of competition, they may not have as much drive to keep costs low. There's a lot of sides to this discussion. How do you feel about Mega Corps. The comment section was all up on the opolis. Mm -hmm. Monopoly yeah. versus oligopoly. Yes. Monopoly comes from Greek meaning one and to sell, and oligopoly is similar, it means to few and to sell. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One seller, a few sellers. Oh. Yeah. How did you know that about the words? Oh. I looked it up. Oh, I'll speak ancient Greek. Huh, I mean, fair. now you speak a little? <laughs> True. Basically, a monopoly would be like if I sold juice boxes and was the only one to sell juice boxes. Okay. okay. Can I have a juice box? $500. I, I control the market. You can't get them from anyone but me. That's true, All exactly. Right. And an oligopoly would be like if I also sold juice boxes. Okay, mm -hmm. will you give me a juice box? Here, $500. Well, okay, so you're two separate companies, but you're acting like a monopoly. You can see why people were bringing them up huh. in this discussion about mega corporations. Exactly. Okay, so who's gonna give me a juice box? It's $500, I'm serious. Yeah, you can you have one for me too. I'm starting my own juice box company. Okay, yes. well, another highly debated grocery topic is chicken mm -hmm. and whether or not you wash that chicken. So watch this. Yo, I got a serious question for you. Do you wash your chicken? I do. Every time I buy chicken, I wash it off with a bit of warm water and lemon juice. It just feels fresher. I didn't think that was a lot, but depending on who you ask, it is. I don't really have a reason other than that's how I saw it done growing up, but more than anything, I just don't wanna get disowned. Like, seriously. Some people think that washing your chicken actually removes the bacteria, while others think that it just spreads it across other kitchen surfaces. Now, many food experts agree that heating your chicken is enough to kill off any of the bad stuff, but food experts don't have to deal with my mom. 
or my aunties, or my sister. So what say you? Okay, you can't see it in the video, but there was a poll attached as well. And the results? Um, 46% yes, 54% no, which is higher than I thought. Almost half half. Yeah. Pretty um, even. Yeah. yeah. Surprising. Half of them were listening to my mom. So one thing you talked about in the video is pressure from your family. Yeah. So now that you moved out, do you still wash your chicken? A hundred percent. Really? Yeah, I'm convinced that they would just know if I didn't. You like I come okay. to see you in your dreams and be yeah. like, wash it. Yeah, pretty much. I would go to bed after eating chicken and she would be like, I know you didn't wash that. Okay, well, I'm gonna ah. blow your mind. So okay. are you ready for this? Yes. The government of Canada actually says never rinse your poultry before cooking it because the bacteria can spread to wherever the water splashes. Okay, how never. much water are you splashing, first of all? Secondly, are you saying my mom is lying? All right, I'm a well, I'm thank you guys so much for watching. You can watch the rest of our videos on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Okay, we'll bye. <laughs>